In this tutorial, we're looking at scheduling and shared parameters. Now, why use shared parameters? Well, we all work in different offices and there are certain things that we like to put into schedules. Um, each office is different and each office likes to put different things in the schedule. For instance, you do a plumbing schedule and you would maybe call um, a wash and basin, toilet, urinal, you would call that item in your schedules where someone would call it maybe fittings. Now, Revit has got built-in parameters, but I find that they don't always satisfy all the needs I've got. So for me, the best way is to set up uh, shared parameters where you can actually uh, put your own parameters in and then bring those shared parameters into your document those the the you set them up in the family first then you bring them into the document and then actually schedule it the way you would like to be scheduled okay what I'm gonna do I'm gonna sh we're gonna do a door and um, just for scheduling purposes I'm just gonna copy this door over so that there's more than one okay so in the schedule Hopefully, we will see three doors. Okay. So, we're going to select this door and we're going to say edit family. Okay, now we're in the family. Uh, all we want to set up here is the parameters for scheduling. Okay, we want to do a door schedule. And the, parameter, the parameters that we want, um, I've already set, set up parameters before and you can't set them up twice. So, I'm just going to give them uh, fake names. So... In our company, we say uh, we, we've got a parameter called door description, door finish, door frame description, and door frame finish. Now, Revit, when you, when you look at the family types here, when, when you look at the different parameters, we've got door material, but there's no... Our contractors are looking for the parameter door description and door finish so I'm gonna set up new parameters we're gonna go add parameter now unfortunately there isn't a parameter for that so we're gonna have to set up a shared parameter you go select okay uh, we're gonna have to just go edit now at the top is your parameters at the bottom is your groups so this group for instance is doors. Now I've already set that up so I'm gonna make a fake one for us quickly. So let's go let's make a new group and we call this uh, test. Okay now let's say we want to make a new parameter this parameters name is gonna be uh, door XX and it is text uh, okay, that's already in use. I've used that with a previous test. Door XXX. Okay. And we're going to do another parameter. And we're going to call that door finish XXX. And that's also text. Okay, so we've set up two, two new parameters. We go OK. Okay, now on the parameter group, we go to test, we go to door XXX, we go OK, and we go OK again. There you will see the new parameter under text. We go add the second one. We do exactly the same. We go to test, we go to door finish XXX, we go OK, and OK. Now, under text, you'll see both parameters that we've just set up. I'm just going to do a quick note. Let's say um, this is my fire door under door description and under door finish. Um, please paint this door. Okay, we're going to apply that to the door. And then we're going to say OK. And we're going to say load this into our project. And we're going to say always choose the bottom one. When you're using shared parameters, use 
overwrite the existing version and its parameter values very important if you don't if you select the top one it's not gonna it's, it, it won't update the parameters okay now let's let's do a schedule so we go to view we go to schedule schedule quantities let's just save there okay, let's just cancel that okay and we're gonna do a door schedule okay now you'll see that those things you've just set up do not appear under the available fields um, one available field that we do want is count that's the number of doors okay we put count in there and now we're gonna have to go to our add parameters and you'll see it looks exactly the same as in the family and you just go find it so what you're actually doing is you you connecting the schedule with the family's parameters so we're gonna go door say okay and you'll see it appears there then you're gonna go add parameter again shared parameters select test finish okay and okay um, we're gonna sort them by name and we're not going to optimize them f um, for each and every instance okay and for some other reason nothing appeared let's quickly go back to the door there select edit okay for some other reason nothing is showing there why would that be apply okay and uh, there we go I'm not sure why that happened um, but anyway uh, there it is so you've got your door count your door description this is a fire door which obviously you can change to anything and your door finish and the same with that so this you can do with anything if you want to set up a sanitary schedule um, plumbing electric lighting and you've got your own parameters you want to bring in i find this is the best way use rather than trying to rename the standard parameters in revit rather make your own that will suit your company and um, schedule it the way that the contractors are used to seeing it i hope that helps um, it's as easy as that